Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I want to talk about how to create your own sampler instruments in Logic. And by sampler, I mean that you have a series of samples that you want to lay out across the keys of your keyboard or drum pad, or you have an audio recording that you want to chop up and also place across the keys of a keyboard or drum pad. It's quite easy to get set up with a sampler instrument, and we're going to use the esteemed EXS24 in Logic to do exactly that. Now, it's really cool to be able to create a new piece of music from an old existing idea. In fact, I took a vocal phrase and I chopped it up and created a new idea from the phrase. First, let's listen to the original vocal phrase, and then we'll listen to my idea. Okay, pretty cool. Now let's check out the idea that I wrote by chopping up this vocal phrase and creating my own sampler instrument. Okay, pretty cool. I'm happy. It's just a quick little idea that I got down. Now, how do we go from this original vocal phrase to this? Again, it's quite easy. All we really need to do is, is right click on the actual audio region, go down to convert to new sampler track. But before we dig into that, I wanna show you how you can set up and fine tune your sampler track so your samples are spread out as you want them to be. So if I solo this and then double click on the region itself, we're presented with the track editor. Instead, I wanna to go to the audio file editor, which is a place for destructive audio editing, but we're not gonna do anything destructive to this audio file. Instead, all I care about is this transient editing mode. When I click on this, Logic is going to generate these transient markers everywhere that it thinks a new transient exists. Transients, just imagine a kick drum. Every time a kick drum hits, that's a transient. With something like a vocal pass, it's a little more complex, but hopefully it caught the variations of notes for this vocal performance. So you can double check the performance by double clicking. Oh. Okay, that feels pretty good to me and it looks like that all of the transient markers are where I want them to be. But if they aren't exactly where you want them, you can actually go up to one of the mouse menus here and select the pencil tool. I'm gonna use my right click tool or command click tool as the pencil tool. And we can just zoom in right here and I can add a transient marker just like that. Very simple. But we can go ahead and fine tune where each of these transient markers are placed. I can just click, hold, and drag it where I need it to be. Or if I don't want a transient marker to represent a different part of the sample, then I can just double click to get rid of it. Once we have our transient markers in place, now let's right click on the region and convert to new sampler track. Logic is gonna present us with a dialogue that's going to ask a couple of questions. Do you wanna create zones from regions or transient markers? In the case of regions, maybe you have a bunch of different regions in your project that you wanna consolidate into a single sampler instrument. But in this case, we have a single region and we have transient markers to represent each of the different slices we want to occur for our instrument. So I'm gonna stick with transient markers. We can create one-shot zones, which I'll explain later, and we can rename the instrument. We'll call this vocal phrase. And we can also set the range for the notes to trigger the samples. And I'm gonna start this at C1 and it can go as high as G8 if there were that many samples. Okay, let's click OK. So now Logic has created this new EXS24 instrument. And if I double click on it, it's pretty awesome. Logic actually places a MIDI note along the piano roll to represent where each sample is on the piano roll. Perfect. Now maybe we didn't quite get the editing correct when we were adjusting for the beginning and end of each sample. No biggie. Let's take a look at the EXS24. Now the EXS24 is amazing, but it's a little long in the tooth, right? It looks a little old, but it can do a lot for us. Let's navigate to the edit menu within the EXS24. Okay, so now we see our different samples spread out across the top section here and also along a keyboard down here. So this top section gives us a little more information about the different samples or zones as the EXS24 likes to call it. We see the name for each zone. So if I click and drag this out, we can see that. There's a little suffix at the end to represent the different sections. 
the audio file name from which these samples or zones came from, the key on which each of these samples or zones resides on, and then other functions for adjusting our zones. Along the keyboard bed here, we see blocks for each of our samples. So if I click on one of these blocks, we can also see the identifying zone up here. And if I click up here, we can see that it's adjusted down here. So if I wanna go in and adjust the beginning and end of a specific sample, so let's try and find that one sample. Perfect. If I double click on this zone, we're going to be brought to an audio file editor once again to adjust the beginning and end. Now, if you don't see your sample in the audio file editor here, just go back to the instrument editor for the EXS24 and double click again. All right, perfect. So now all we need to do is adjust the region border down here to where we need it. Pretty awesome, right? So let's bring this back. And we can adjust the end as well. If we go to the other edge of the boundary, I might have to drag this out. And it's really that simple. So once we have this set up the way we would like it, we can return to the editor here within the EXS24. And we have much more that we can adjust on top of this. We can actually adjust which keys play this particular zone across the keyboard. So just by dragging the beginning and end of a block down here, we can adjust which keys play. And as long as this pitch block is enabled, the pitch will adjust based on the key that we play. Pretty amazing. And we can even double up or triple up certain samples or zones onto different keys. So if I drag this block here and then adjust the same boundary, there's even more that we can fine tune and adjust regarding our different zones. If we head back to the top here, we can adjust the pitch of these different tones on a coarse or fine tune level. So as long as I select the different zones I want to adjust and then drag this up, Drag it down. It's pretty awesome. And all you have to do is drag up or down in each parameter. Set these back to zero. Now we can also adjust in a mixer sort of way the volume for our different samples or the panning. So as we play our sampler instrument, we can actually spread our different zones out across the stereo pan, adjust the volume for each so they're more comparable. Another important feature I think for a lot of users is if they want to use the EXS24 as a multi-output instrument, you can actually set up the output for each individual zone like so. And then when we reopen the EXS24 as a multi-output instrument, we can dig into the mixer here break out the different outputs. And now when I hit the keys, they'll be spread out across the different outputs and the different auxiliary channels. As you make these changes to your EXS instruments, when you close out of this instrument editor window, Logic is going to ask you if you want to save these changes. Typically, you would want to save these changes. Beyond that, we can also set up our zones as one shots, which means it doesn't matter how brief or long you hit a key, the sample will play out in its full length. So let's set up a one shot and hit one of the keys. But if I turn this off, quite a bit different. We can also reverse the sample as well. Pretty amazing. So the EXS24 has so much in it. It's a very deep instrument. And if you go to the view section here, there's plenty of other things that you can dig into as well. For now, I just wanted to bestow upon you how to set up your own sampler instrument. One last parting thought is once you're happy with an instrument, if you wanna export your sampler instrument, all you need to do is go to instrument, export sampler instrument and sampler files. And from here, Logic will provide you with an option for exporting this entire instrument so you can import it to other Logic systems or other systems outside of Logic. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, new posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.